Good day, students. This time we'll be having another lesson in mathematics in the modern world. This is your instructor, Mr. Jaffet N. Nabaira. But before we start our lesson, take note of these important features of the e module. The first one is the checkpoint. If you will see this feature across the e module, it conveys that you have to check your progress. It could be a practice exercise, a drill, or a thought provoking question that will solicit your answer to better understand the topic discussed. Another important feature of the e-module is the key to correction. This feature in the e-module will give you immediate answers to the questions that are posted in the checkpoint section. No explanations will be provided to generate your own justification of the answers, hence enhancing your creativity and critical thinking abilities. So you have to take note of these two important features, the checkpoint and the key to correction. This will serve as an assessment to check if you really understand the lessons or not. All right, this time we'll be having E-module 1.2 or the Fibonacci sequence. For the learning objectives, at the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify the terms in a Fibonacci sequence, relate Fibonacci sequence to the concept of golden ratio, and apply the concept of Fibonacci sequence to some patterns and regularities in nature. As an overview, look at this picture of rabbits. They have something to do with the origin of Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence exhibits a certain numerical pattern which originated as the answer to the famous rabbit problem. This pattern turned out to have interest and importance far beyond what its creator had imagined. To get acquainted with the famous Fibonacci's rabbit problem, here is the statement of that problem. At the beginning of a month, you are given a pair of newborn rabbits. After a month, the rabbits have produced no offspring. That is a month of maturity. However, every month thereafter, the pair of rabbits produce another pair of rabbits. The offspring reproduce in exactly the same manner. So if you're going to imagine, after the original pair of rabbits have reproduced another pair of rabbits, that first born pair of rabbits will reproduce in the same manner like the original pair of rabbits. If none of these rabbits dies, how many pairs of rabbits will there be at the start of each succeeding month? So this is a famous rabbit problem. Can you find an answer to this rabbit problem? Well, later on, we will explore that the answer will come up to the famous Fibonacci sequence. Let us be acquainted first with who is Leonardo Fibonacci. That is his picture. Looks like a math genius. Leonardo Pisa, also known as Fibonacci, is one of the best known mathematicians of medieval Europe. In 1202, after a trip that took him to several Arab and Eastern countries, he wrote the book Liber Abbasi. In this book, he explained the Hindu-Arabic numeration system, and it also contains the problem that concerns the birth rate of rabbits, and that is the famous rabbit problem. Now, to start the discussion of Fibonacci sequence, let us go back to the previous rabbit problem, and it is illustrated here. Based on the rabbit problem, at the end of one month, there exists a pair of rabbits. In the second month, still, there is a pair of rabbits because they haven't reproduced yet. They are in a one-month process of maturity. But look, after the third month, the original pair of rabbits reproduced 
another pair of rabbits. But there's more. After the fourth month, the original pair of rabbits again reproduced another pair of rabbits. Because according to the famous rabbit problem, after a month of maturity, the pair of rabbits will continue to reproduce another pair of rabbits every month thereafter. And take note, the firstborn pair of rabbits will also follow the pattern. It will take a month of maturity. So basically, we have three pairs of rabbits after the fourth month. At the end of the fifth month, the original pair of rabbits again reproduced another pair. But the firstborn pair of rabbits started to reproduce another pair because they are done now in a one-month process of maturity. But still, the second pair of rabbits that were reproduced by the original pair of rabbits will still undergo a one-month maturity. So basically, we have five pairs of rabbits after the fifth month. So can you see a pattern now? What if after the sixth month or after the seventh month, what will be the number of pairs of rabbits? So let's explore more. If you're going to write the number of pairs of rabbits in a sequence after five months, it will look like this. One, one, two, three, five, and so on. So what could be the number of pairs of rabbits after five? Let's try. Can you find some pattern now in the sequence of numbers? Look at one and one, it becomes two. Look at one and two, it becomes three. Look at two and three, it becomes five. See the pattern? According to Fibonacci, he discovered that the number of pairs of rabbits of any month after the first two months can be found by adding the numbers of pairs of rabbits in each of the two previous months. That means after the first and the second month, we still have one pair of rabbits. But after the first and second month, the succeeding month's pairs of rabbits will be the sum of the number of pairs of rabbits in the previous two months. And this is now known as the Fibonacci sequence. Later, we'll be defining this technically. I think right now you have a very good grasp of the concept of a Fibonacci sequence from the famous rabbit problem. Let's try to check your understanding. We have a checkpoint. Give the number of pairs of rabbits after the following months. Since in our problem, in our illustration, we just have included until the fifth month. We have three pairs of rabbits in the fourth month and five pairs of rabbits in the fifth month. What if in the sixth month? in the seventh month, or in the eighth month. You can pause this video for a while, maybe for two minutes, for you to analyze deeply and analyze carefully for you to come up with the correct answer. Then you can play it again for you to check your answers. Is that clear? I guess you have now your answers. Here is your key to correction. Basically, since we have three and five pairs of rabbits after the fourth and fifth month, after the sixth month, we'll be having eight because three plus five is eight. For the seventh month, we will be having 13 because five plus eight is 13. And basically, after the eighth month, you'll be having 21 because eight plus 13 is 21. So that's how easy Fibonacci sequence is, which originated actually from the famous rabbit problem. Okay, so let's continue our exploration of the Fibonacci sequence. Let's now deal with a recursive definition of Fibonacci sequence. A sequence is recursive in nature if the next term in the sequence can be found 
using the previous terms. And since we're using the previous two terms to find the next term in the Fibonacci sequence, then we know that Fibonacci sequence is a recursive sequence. And how are we going to define it? Let the notation f sub n represent the nth Fibonacci number. Then the numbers in the Fibonacci sequence are given by the following. f sub 1 or the first term is 1. f sub 2 or the second term is 1. But the nth term after the first and the second term will be computed using f sub n minus 1 plus f sub n minus 2. That means for the terms that are greater than or equal to 3. This connotes that starting from the third term until the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth term, even and so on, you can use the previous two terms to find the next term. And that's what f sub n minus 1 plus f sub n minus 2 mean. The first term is 1. The second term is 1. And of course, the next term is 1 plus 1, 2. What about next? 1 plus 2, 3. The next term, 2 plus 3, 5. 5 plus 3, 8. 8 plus 5, 13. 13 plus 8, 21. 21 plus 13, 34. And the pattern continues like this. See how easy Fibonacci sequence using the recursive definition, just adding the previous two terms, and there's no problem anymore. Okay? I think you're now ready for another exercise. Find the 12th term of a Fibonacci sequence. This is very easy. We have now the ninth term in the previous example. So the problem is you must have the 10th, 11th for you to find the 12th term. And it's now very easy because you have the previous terms in our discussion. The next question is, if f sub 22 is 17,711 and f sub 24 is equal to 46,368, what is f sub 23? You can answer this question using the recursive definition of the Fibonacci sequence. That is, the sum of the previous two terms will give you the next term in a Fibonacci sequence. You can pause this video again for two minutes or three minutes for you to analyze carefully the problem. Did you get it, everybody? All right, I know that you have now the answers to the questions. So for your key to correction, we have the following answers. For the first question, you have 144. And the second question, you have 28,657. Shall we proceed? So let's try to relate Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio. The relationship of this sequence to the golden ratio lies not in the actual numbers of the sequence, but in the ratio of the consecutive numbers. We will find the ratios of these numbers by dividing the larger number by the smaller number that fall consecutively in the series. Or in short, you will find the ratio of the next term in the Fibonacci sequence to the previous term in the sequence and try to observe the ratio. So let's look at some of the ratios of these numbers. In the sequence 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, the ratio of 1 is to 1, or the ratio of the second term to the first term is 1. The ratio of 2 is to 1 is 2. That is the ratio of the third term to the second term. The ratio of 3 is to 2 is 1.5. Of course, because 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. And the ratios continue like this. The next ratio, you can try it in your own. 5 is to 3, 8 is to 5, 13 is to 8. 21 is to 13, and so on. So basically, you will have these answers. 5 is to 3, 1 1.67, 1 1.6, 1.625, 1 1.615, 1 1.619, 1 1.618, and 1.618.
Notice that as we continue down the sequence, the ratios seem to be converging upon one number, and that is 1.618. The number to which the ratios converge is known as the golden ratio. So let's learn more about this. The golden ratio is what we call an irrational number. Why is it irrational? It has an infinite number of decimal places. It's non-terminating, and it never repeats itself. So it's non-repeating. That's why it's irrational. Generally, we round the golden ratio to 1.618. And that came from 1 plus square root of 5 over 2, which is 1.618 0, 3, 4, and so on, because it's a non-terminating decimal. We use the Greek letter phi, so you have now there the symbol for phi to denote the golden ratio. Geometrically, it can also be visualized as a rectangle perfectly formed by a square and another rectangle which can be repeated infinitely inside each section. This is known as the golden rectangle. So once you can see a golden rectangle that has a ratio of 1.618 is to 1, most probably that is a golden rectangle. And that is one of the most beautiful concepts in mathematics. This time, what if you're asked to find the end term in a Fibonacci sequence without using the recursive definition or you don't have any knowledge of the previous two terms. Can we find the end term? Say, for example, you're finding the 30th term and you don't know the 28th and the 29th term. Can you find that term? Of course, yes. And there's a way of solving this problem that relates to the golden ratio again. That is with the use of this formula. F sub n, or the end term of a Fibonacci sequence, is phi raised to n, we know that phi is represented by the golden ratio 1.618 minus 1 minus phi raised to n over square root of 5. This formula is known as the Binet's formula, so named because it was derived by the mathematician Jacques Philippe Marie Binet. This formula is very useful. Why? Because we don't need to have any knowledge of the previous terms of the Fibonacci sequence for us to find a certain n term. Let's try. For example, if you're going to find the ninth term of a Fibonacci sequence without knowing the seventh and eighth term, this can be found using the formula given. Just using the six decimal places of the golden ratio, well, I think that is a very good estimate because the answer will be closer to the actual value, exactly equal to the addition of the previous two terms. But if you want to be more accurate, you can use more decimal places, since we know that the golden ratio is an irrational number, so that the value will really approach the actual whole number. You can also use your calculator for easier computation. Since we're finding the ninth term of the Fibonacci sequence, let n be equal to 9, and we will use 1.618034 for phi. Let's substitute the values to the given formula. F sub 9, or the ninth term, is equal to 1.618034 raised to 9, minus 1 minus 1.618034 raised to 9, over square root of 5. Please don't round off your answers for you to get a very good estimate. So the answers of raising 1.618034 to 9 is here. And the answer of 1 minus 1.618034 is here, negative, of course, because 1 minus 1.618 is a negative. Then raising it to 9 will give you this answer. Now, subtracting the entries in the numerator, we will have the answer over square root of 5. And dividing the answer by square root of 5 will give you 
And if you're going to round off the answer, that will give you 34. Did you get it? So for easier computation, you can use your calculator, especially when you're raising a certain number to a higher power. We have another checkpoint. Try to practice your skill in finding the end term without using the recursive definition or the previous two terms. The question is, find the 25th term of a Fibonacci sequence using the Binet's formula. You can use your calculator to solve easily. You can also pause this video since I think that will consume for at most three minutes of computation so that you can focus in computing the correct answer and play it again to view the correct answer. Is that clear? All right. I guess you have now your answer. So here is now the key to your correction. The answer is 75,025. Did you get the correct answer using the formula? I think it's a yes. This time, we'll be exploring more about Fibonacci sequence in nature, a sneezeworth. This is the picture of a sneezeworth. And what's with a sneezeworth that relates it to the Fibonacci sequence? One plant in particular shows the Fibonacci numbers in the number of growing points that it has. I think you now have an idea. Suppose that when a plant puts out a new shoot, that shoot has to grow two months before it is strong enough to support branching. And it branches every month after that at the growing point. So see the growing points in the sneeze worth? We will discover more of this. Now, a plant that grows very much like this is called the sneeze worth or Achillea termica. This is known as Harangan in Tagalog that can be found in Cagayan, Rizal, Laguna, and other provinces. If you will count the number of branches in each section, this will result to Fibonacci numbers. And this is the wonder behind the sneezeworth that makes it related to Fibonacci sequence. Let's start to count the number of branches in each section. In the first section, we have one branch. In the second section, still one branch. In the third section, two branches. Fourth section, three branches. Fifth section, five branches. Sixth section, eight branches. And the last section in the given illustration, we have 13 branches. So if you're going to arrange this number of branches in each section, this will form a Fibonacci sequence. This is how beautiful a sneeze word is because Fibonacci sequence is part of it. This is the first example that relates an element of nature to the Fibonacci sequence. But there's more. We'll proceed with pine cones to continue Pine cones show the Fibonacci spirals clearly. We'll be counting it later on. Here is a picture of an ordinary pine cone seen from its base where the stalk connects it to the tree. Can you see the two sets of spirals? Please observe the picture. How many are there in each set? So let's count. For the clockwise spirals, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight clockwise spirals. What about for the counterclockwise spirals? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So we have thirteen counterclockwise spirals and eight clockwise spirals. What's the matter with these numbers eight and 13? Eight and 13 are part of the Fibonacci sequence. So basically, like a sunflower, every spiral in a pine cone demonstrates or illustrates Fibonacci sequence. 
consecutive pairs of Fibonacci sequence to be exact, like 8 and 13. That is very prominent in pine cones. All right, let's proceed to another element of nature that contains Fibonacci sequence. These are the flower petals. Flowers are easily considered as things of beauty. If you look more closely, you will know that different flowers have different number of petals. Take iris and trillium. Both have only three petals. So these two flowers are examples of flowers that has three petals. But there's more. Flowers with five petals are said to be the most common. These include columbine, hibiscus, and buttercup. The pictures shown are examples of flowers with five petals. So see how beautiful these flowers are? Next, among those with eight petals, of course we have also flowers with eight petals, are clematis and delphinium, while rugwort and marigold have 13. Okay, so let's count the number of petals of the flower at the top. We have eight petals. What about the flower at the bottom? We have 13 petals. These numbers, 3, 5, 8, and 13, are all Fibonacci numbers. Maybe this could be the reason why these flowers are so beautiful and amazing, because they are part of a beautiful sequence of numbers known as Fibonacci sequence. This time, it's now your turn. Take a look at the given cactus to the right. Verify if this plant exhibits a Fibonacci number. Try to examine it very closely. How can you find the concept of Fibonacci sequence in this cactus? You can pause the video for one minute and verify if this plant exhibits a Fibonacci sequence. I think you have now your answer. For your key to correction, it's a no-no because it has 29 arms and 29 is not even part of a Fibonacci sequence. Hence, we can say that not all elements of nature exhibit Fibonacci sequence. Only few has, and that makes them different and beautiful. Take note of this. The Fibonacci sequence as a sequence of numbers in which each successive numbers in the sequence is obtained by adding the two previous numbers in the sequence has been linked to many concepts in mathematics like the golden ratio. This means that this sequence of numbers that emanates from the famous rabbit problem has entered the different facets of this world like the patterns in nature. It is indeed undeniable that this sequence has something to do with this world and many are still on the process of discovering them. That ends our discussion of this module about Fibonacci sequence. If you want to learn more about this topic and read more about Fibonacci sequence and its application, you have these references. And we also have these online references. You can cite the internet and learn more about Fibonacci sequence. So it's your choice if you want to learn more about this topic. And here are the photo credits for the icons that I used in this e-module. That's all for this lesson. Thank you for listening. Have a great day and God bless everyone.